Okay. Welcome everyone to the series um, Spring Cleaning and Traveling with Feng Shui. Today uh, we are so happy that we are presenting the first session out of three sessions and we are going to be talking about decluttering and organizing. Uh, these series are going to be running for three weeks, three complete weeks, with one session each week. Uh, this, the second is about suitcases and packing. The third one is going to be about traveling and moving abroad. Um, so today, before uh, decluttering and organizing, which is the first session, uh, let us uh, quickly introduce ourselves. Uh, Myself, Maria Eugenia Abreu, I am the founder of The Art of Travel, which impacts and inspires passionate people uh, around the world uh, to find the courage to live an inspired life. In that sense, I do coaching, life coaching, and I have studied Feng Shui in, uh, in Uruguay, which is my home country, at the National Institute of Feng Shui. Uh, and one of my coaching programs uh, relates to Feng Shui, and I also have a private um, Facebook group uh, that uh, has the same name. Let me show you real quick here. <clears throat> so these are my programs, and here it is the Feng Shui and Coaching on the Go uh, program that I'm talking about. I also have uh, my Facebook group with the same name, so you are welcome to join. And uh, <clears throat> well, and that, uh, that puts together both practices, uh, coaching and Feng Shui. Um, also, I live in Portugal and I'm, I'm based in Cascais. So that's a uh, bit about me. Um, Brandy, would you like to introduce yourself? Thanks. I'm Brandy. I am the founder of Airy Spaces. I am a declutter and organization specialist uh, here in Florence, Italy. I have a passion for minimalism and environmental sustainability. I'm originally from Canada, but I've been living abroad now for eight years. I launched Airy Spaces for people to live a more organized, decluttered, and meaningful life. I, uh, I met Henya on an online women's empowerment meetup where yeah, we connected exactly. and we shared, uh, you know, a lot of similar beliefs, our attitude, and overall way of living. <laughs> yeah, great. <laughs> yeah, so now that you know who your folks they are, uh, let, let me introduce you to the specific topics that we are going to see for today's session, which is decluttering and organizing. We have six specific topics. Uh, first one, decluttering, where we are going to see the definition, what that, mean, uh, what that means. Uh, then we are going to talk about our environment and why the environment it is, it is important. Uh, then we are going to talk about the spring cleaning specifically, how we do that, how we do a spring cleaning. We are going to set a plan of action, so how we make choices to take action to, to do that. We are going to talk about a little bit about the wardrobe, um, you know, giving tips on how to deal with that. And finally, setting the goals, setting the goals. Um, so, um, I think Brandy is going to explain a little bit about decluttering now, right? Yes. Okay. Decluttering. What is it? So, for me, my definition, I like any amount that is right for you at this time. So, you know, releasing who we think that we should be and embracing our fullest, truest, most loving version of who we actually are. Um, you know, it's like uh, people think that declutter is just going through items and tossing it out when you have too many, but that's, that could be one version, but then also, you know, it's understanding 
our values and observing how they're reflected in our physical space. So, you know, for clutter, it's not universally defined. Everything is quite personal. It's all based on you and how you see yourself. Yeah, exactly. And for example, in Feng Shui, we say about our environment, we say that it's considered our inner self. So in that sense, if we have clutter in our home, that is as to say like mental clutter, see? And since we and our environment are a match, we can tell many things about people by observing their spaces. So when we are trying to create the life we want, we can turn to our environment because the environment talks about us and our goals. Uh, but um, let's talk about specifically uh, spring cleaning. Because spring cleaning, it is the perfect time to get rid of stuff. Like we go through our closets, drawers, cabinets, and clear out what we don't need. Uh, there is, in Chinese, there is a, a homophone that uh, where dust equals old, right? So this is very interesting. And the, the point of the, the spring cleaning is to make us feel better, see, and to create a shift in, our, in energy in, uh, in our home and in our lives as well. Um, so let us see some practices, uh, specific practices of spring cleaning. Of, so, for example, let me show you a picture. I have a picture here. Mm. Oh, sorry. So, uh, first one. First practice is to wash your windows because you will be able to see better. You wash your windows and you let the fresh air circulate freely in your home. And also um, about the curtains and the, the blinds, the, how do you say the blinds on the windows? You can wash them or vacuum them depending on the case. So let the air circulate and open uh, the windows and wash them so you can see through, you can see clear, more clear. That's very important. Then um, another, the window blinds, I mean, the, another practice is to dust off the ceiling fans, the ceiling fans and the light uh, fixtures. See, they get a lot of dust. Then the clutter, you have to dump that clutter. It, it, it cannot remain in your home. Dumping the clutter is another thing. And um, here I have another picture that I would like to share as well. Um, so, fluffing up, fluffing the, the, all the stuff in your home, like what we do with our pillows, like flapping things up, see? <laughs> we flap everything up, like the pillows. Uh, those are some general practices. I think, uh, uh, Brandy, you are going to go through to the specific things. So how to set a spring cleaning in detail, right? Yeah, yeah but... definitely. So I think, you know, a plan, making, a plan of action is extremely important um, when you are deciding when to spring clean or to declutter. Um, you know, you need to prepare yourself, um, selecting a date and time, talking to someone else if you need specific help with or assistance with like heavier, awkward items. If you're shifting furniture, if you're moving things around, um, you know, and then once someone confirms the date with you, then you're accountable as well to see that through. I think that preparing meals in advance is quite important as well. I think we underestimate how exhausting uh, spring cleaning and decluttering actually is. And, you know, throughout the day, we're making so many decisions that by the end of it, the last thing we want to do is decide what we want to have for dinner. 
you know, having a favorite playlist or a radio station <clears throat> in general of, to listen to, just to keep the mood light and, you know, nice and airy, uh, plenty of water. Hydration is yeah. so important and crucial with making decisions. And I think that, you know, having water available um, throughout the whole day yeah, sure. is, yeah. is really important. <clears throat> Preparing uh, in advance, getting all your cleaning supplies. Uh, we can so easily, uh, you know, avoid something and just stop what we're doing because, oh, well, we don't have this, so I need to go out and buy this. Or so when we prepare ahead of time and have everything, we don't have that excuse. Uh, and, you know, I think getting the vacuum, getting multi purpose rags, multi purpose cleaners, having a broom, a dustpan. Uh, boxes as well too. I have a something here to share with you of what I like to do. And you know, I have uh, specific boxes. So then that way when I'm going through things and I'm decluttering, I know what to put it in. So like a keep, a donate, the trash, sell and recycle. So then when you're going through, you're putting it specifically into that box and not creating more clutter around you. Yeah, that's a good idea. <laughs> <laughs> and then also, you know, like you mentioned, open the doors and the windows, like circulate that fresh air throughout your home. Yeah. Lighting a candle or burning some incense also just to, you know, rejuvenate the, the air. Uh, and when we're going through and we're doing our spring clean, declutter, wipe down everything, take everything out of the drawers, take everything off the shelf, uh, make sure that there's no dust laying around when you're shifting furniture, you know, clean under the bed, vacuum, dust, do whatever you need to, like move your couch or your table or roll up the rug if you have a rug down, just bring it outside, air it out. Um, I think that, you know, sometimes we forget when we're just transferring things in and out to actually wipe down drawers and to make sure that everything's clean. Move energy in, in a general way, right? Because everything is energy. <laughs> mm -hmm. It is. And then I think we're going to go back to you so that you can talk more or talk about yeah, the Yeah, about the wardrobe a little bit. Yeah. Um, for example, let's think about the wardrobe as an extension of ourselves. Okay? Um, because we, we said that, that the environment, our environment match us, matches us. So let's think of, uh, of the wardrobe as an extension of ourselves. When we shake things up and we, or we shake it up, we are doing the same with ourselves. See, usually uh, closets or wardrobes have a stagnant energy, which lies in hidden spaces. Uh, and also the wardrobe is an area of the house that we don't see much. So, but it is as important as the other areas, even though we don't see it very much. In Feng Shui, we say that uh, behind closed doors matters, which means because you don't see it, it doesn't mean it's not affecting you. It's not affecting you. If you have a chaos and dirt and everything inside your closet, and even though if you close the doors and you don't see it, that, that energy is affecting you anyway, even though you don't see it. So remember, behind closed doors matters. Uh, so, how can we avoid the stagnant energy? Uh, first of all, we can organize, um, we have to have the wardrobe organized. So, we can organize it by color, by type, um, whatever works for you. Uh, for example, in my case, I, by color never worked for me. I don't feel like organizing by color. I organize the wardrobe by type. So let me check you on a, a, a picture of, for example, what I do is, is in, in my wardrobe, my specific wardrobe, what I do is have uh, everything separated by type. 
So my wardrobe is by child. So that means that I have the 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 t-shirts, uh, sh uh, short sleeve t-shirts in one side, long sleeve t-shirts in another one, pants in another one, the skirts, etc. So I have everything separated by type. And then on, in every se section, I have everything uh, folded and organized. So for example, let's say I am uh, going to, let's say this, these are here, up here on this uh, workshop, they are the long sleeve, the short sleeve, the pants. So whenever I, I am looking for a t-shirt, long sleeve t-shirt, then I know where to go. And when I go there to that specific section, I have everything folded and organized. I can easily go through it, all of my stuff and find the, what I'm looking for very easy. So <clears throat> that's what I do, but uh, you have to do what works for you. For example, there are other things like here, if you can see boxes down here, uh, those could be, could be clothes that we don't use very often, but uh, we have to take care of them as well. So because we don't use them often, it doesn't mean we don't have to take care of them. Everything is energy. So we, of course, if we use them, we take care of them because we are using them. But we have to care about the other, others too. So the whole closet we have to take care of. Um, so um, what else? Well, so the, the clothes that we don't use very often or some of them, we don't use them at all. Like we can put as brand is it like in the, in the box that is this trash or donate, whatever. Uh, you know, many people have uh, clothes that they don't use at all. Um, <clears throat> the ones that we don't use, we have, we can wash them or fluff them up or do something like wash them because they have a store that the store smells sometimes. The smell that they've been stored for a while, you know, that smell. So even we haven't used them, we wash them. Maybe we use a nice smell softener to, you know, to, to remove, to transform that energy in something better. And also making space in the closet, the, the picture I have shown you see, they have a lot of room there. Uh, they have things separated. There's air running through every piece of cloth. Um, it helps also making a space, uh, making a space in the closet makes a space for positive energy in our lives as well. Um, so we are going to see in detail, I think Brandon, you are going to explain how to how to specifically do what specifically do with the items, right? And, and how to organize those things. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Um, I think that for us, for some who do seasonal wardrobe switch outs, um, it's very important to go through each item and feel it. Uh, this may be before washing or after washing, but uh, you know, when, when we feel something, try and remember what it felt like the last time that you wore this item. What are the memories of it? Are they positive or are they negative? And, you know, when you're thinking about that is <laughs> try it on as well, too, because things might not fit the same that they used to. It's just, it happens, right? Um, Having separate boxes as well, like how I said before with spring cleaning, also have this when you're going through the wardrobe and switching it out or looking at, um, you know, the different seasons as well too. So, you know, a repair because sometimes there's holes or something that you fix or you're missing a button or whatever it is. So then that way you can get to it. You can get it done, especially if it's a favorite item that has just been sitting there stagnant for a long time, you know, rebirth it. Like, Give it fresh new energy. So then there's the donate, there's the sell, there's the, the reusable as well too. Can you repurpose that item into something else? Can you cut up an old t-shirt and then use it for regs? There's a lot of different ways that 
you can repurpose uh, old clothes that we don't want to use anymore. Um, I think that, you know, being realistic and truthful with yourself during this process as well is extremely important. You know, if you're going to say, oh, maybe one day I'll fit in these. Well, you know, then you're, you're, you're looking at the future or you're living in the past as well too, and you're not being present. So I think that that's, that's something to really keep in mind when you're going through this, um, you know, playing around and shifting some stuff. Uh, I have a photo here to, to share that, you know, just because existing fixtures, Is, ex is ex oh. <laughs> existing <laughs> yeah so here you know you have on the left hand side is a before so once everything was taken out you wiped down it all and for me it wasn't working for the long dresses that i'm about to put in so i shifted it over to the right side so then that way i'm able to just you know utilize that space a little bit more so play around with it, you know, like just because things look a certain way to you or they've been like that doesn't necessarily mean that they need to stay like that. Um, so I wonder yeah. how many people have the wardrobe like this. <laughs> 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 not me, not me. Mine is organized. <laughs> yeah, yeah, but, right. Yeah. So, um, you know, I think that it's important to, and to cultivate a space that you love. You know, when you're looking at inspiration or photos, also be realistic with yourself here as well too. And realize that when you are looking for inspiration and you see an image, what in that image actually corresponds or relates to you? What like pick out specific, um, I guess, you know, if something is, organized is it because it's in a bright space is it the lighting is it the the amount of stuff or the you know how less of how many less items that they own if that's something that is important to you or that you're seeing um you know keep that in mind because it, it is all personal so just because something works for one person doesn't mean that it needs to work for you yeah exactly. And then and when we're like storing stuff as well too, you know, I think that this definitely goes against feng shui rules, but um, for people who have limited space like myself, I have under bed storage. So I keep a lot of my seasonal stuff there. And when we're doing, when I am doing so, I need to create, like, I can't just throw it in there. Everything needs to be organized and when they say, like you said, out of sight, out of mind, that doesn't really exist. Not when it comes to, you know, Feng Shui and the energy within the home. So I think it's really important to, um, to have an organized space and to make sure that everything is stored properly. Um, you know, for, for this, I really like to use old pillowcases that I'm not using anymore. So then that way my items, I put the items into the pillowcases so that I know where everything is. I know what is in there. I like to have it set up where, you know, with file folding, where everything's lined up, like how it would be on files that you can see where it is all, where everything is as well too. Um, now, when you're storing in high humidity areas, I think it's really important um, to not overcrowd or cram everything in just because like you said, with the wardrobe, air needs to be able to move freely through that. So moisture doesn't get trapped into these clothes and then end up ruining it. Um, I think that, you know, open boxes, it's good, but, you know, not for high humidity areas because you're not protecting the garments or the items that you're storing there. So for on the, on the other side, you can see where like the shoes, they're up high. So if you have that, they need to be sealed and protected to make sure that moisture is not coming through. If you're washing your clothes before you store them, make sure that they're fully dry as well too before you end up putting them into storage because if they're wet at all and in high humidity, there's a high chance that they're gonna, there's gonna be mold when you go and get those items out for the next season. So, and stuff to keep in mind. 
Yeah. And remember that uh, when we were talking about uh, spring cleaning, um, yeah, we have to, it, the, the point of the spring cleaning was to feel better and we are going to have a shift in energy. So we have to have the goal in mind. So how are, are we going to do that? Uh, for example, in, in coaching, we begin by noticing what we don't want. So as a consequence, the other side of the stick is what we want, right? So as a consequence, we know what we want. Uh, so from, from there, knowing what we want is the first step to set our goal, to set our goal. And goals uh, help us to stay focused, stay focused, okay? So what we are going to do, and uh, you, you too, uh, is decide what you want and identify what is over or what is useless either in your house or in your life okay so you have to make a decision what is that you want and identify this is over this is useless at this very moment okay <clears throat> remember that there is a uh, house and life are related in this case you know because the environment is a reflection of what we we are uh, and it's very powerful. Mm. Um, so what we are going to do is that, make that decision. But also you can, for example, uh, by set, for setting goals, you can set images of visualizations that help you achieve your goal. In the, in, you can have, for example, the, the peak of your, of your perfect one. What you think is perfect, okay. So if it is the picture I put earlier, okay, you, you have that at hand, you can see it often. So that's for visualization images or the picture of the perfect wardrobe or whatever um, motivates you according to your goal, to the specific goal. Another, a good practice also uh, that helps us to measure progress because we have to make progress is taking a photo the before and the after okay because that way we have a reference the thing is that when we are gradually changing we don't really realize and we change a little bit and we are adapt to the new environment we change something little and we adapt again so at the end we don't uh, we don't see the big change because we, it was gradually uh, changing. So that way, if we, if we have the picture of the before and the after, we can measure the progress. We can see in our minds. It happens to me, for example, in my case, I'm going through renovations myself in my own house. Um, we changed the bathroom. Uh, and I, did, I, I see the picture because I take pictures. But you know, we always remember the after. Oh, it's nice, we take pictures. But if you don't have a reference, something to compare to, you, you, you cannot see. Like in everything, you have to have a reference, a perspective. See? Uh, yeah, but this is like this now, but it was like this. So you, you can measure the progress. You say, wow, this is a big change. So you really understand what you've been through and, with, and what you have accomplished. This is very important. So the before and the after, okay? I, it happened to me, like, I I now I'll get, I got used to the new bathroom. I really like it. And when I when I see the picture of, of the old one, because I have it, I, I said, wow, I cannot believe I was going to this bathroom is like you know you kind of forget especially those changes that are gradual that you know little by little you change something because it is construction so and the other thing is that in renovation and setting goals uh, also setting goals remember it's your own process okay it's your own process you can take advice uh, from other people but you have to put it in context so you have to decide what works for you and works for you according to you, not to your mother, to your sister, to your 
whatever. Okay? So it's your own process because uh, you should take this seriously because it is a process because it, the, the house is changing and you are uh, changing as well with the house. Mm -hmm. Okay? So that's very important as well. But you have to decide and identify what's no longer useful and what you are over uh, in your house and in your life. Um, so now, if uh, Brandy, if you do, if you have uh, something else to say, um, otherwise I'm gonna give a preview of our next topic. Mm, yes, like if you're feeling overwhelmed at all uh, throughout this process, you know, mm. really make sure that you listen to your body. If it's tired, stop, mm. pause, go go take a break, go do something, and. You know, if it's the amount of clutter that you are going through um, and you're having a really hard time deciding on things, please reach out to me. Like, I'd happily talk to anyone about this or coach them through as well. Yeah, too. of course. Of yeah, course. You, can, you can reach me at uh, www.airyspaces.com or dot, uh, dot on com Instagram. or dot org. Dot, dot org. com. I just got dot com. Ah, dot com. <laughs> ah, okay. Okay, good, good. Yeah. Yeah, you can contact us uh, at any time. And yeah, also for example, myself, I there's people who stay, who don't do things for a long time. So the day they do the spring cleaning, they have a lot of work and, and takes it takes so many days sometimes. You know? Oh yeah, right. In my case, I don't do that because I, I have everything. I, I do backups <laughs> very often, <laughs> let's say. So, you and once know. you start moving as well too, you know, once you start the process, yes. it becomes addicting where you all of a sudden the whole place needs to you know, get turned upside down. And <laughs> yeah. or when, when some people, they, they are cleaning the house, just cleaning, not spring cleaning, but regular cleaning. They mm -hmm. say, okay, today I'm going to clean the house. Like they take a day off to do that. I don't do that because I, I do, I always keep it keep it clean kind of I do little things every day so you know as I keep everything uh, at the same level <laughs> I try to do it often that's what I mean yeah. but not many people do that and they stay like you know a lot of time without uh, doing anything and the the day of the cleaning arrives and they it takes like so many days yeah, yeah no definitely um you know and I find find that people while they're going through decluttering if they've not really decluttered in a long time you'll mm -hmm. find how easy it is to clean as well too with the less stuff that you have yeah yeah so, yeah. so we talked today we talked about decluttering and organizing and the next uh, next session which will be next week uh, remember we have one session per week uh, this series of spring cleaning and traveling with Feng Shui. Uh, we are going to talk about suitcases and packing and also how to pack for a holiday or when you are moving overseas or moving out, definitely. Uh, so suitcases and packing and all related things about, about that topic. Mm -hmm. So we hope uh, you enjoyed this. Uh, it was useful, this, this uh, session, this first session. And also you can contact uh, Brandy at that page and you can contact me at uh, www.kenya-adreu.com. Uh, we, we can post the, the information later on for, for, for you all. And nothing, we hope uh, to see you next week again for more information mm -hmm. and content. Yeah. yeah, thanks for tuning in. Yeah, thank you. Bye bye. Ciao. Yeah.